Finally, we've been waiting for what feels like an eternity for Google to drop Android 15. I just installed it on my Pixel 8 Pro and I've come to a bit of a realization. I have been enlightened, so let's talk about that. Hey guys, I'm Ryan Thomas, and do you remember the last huge Android update? Drop it in the comments. For me, the best of all time has to be Android 5.0 Lollipop. I remember when it came out in its ROM form online and me and my best friend stayed up until like 2 a.m. on a school night flashing the ROMs to our Nexus 4 and Nexus 5 devices respectively. Because we were that excited for it, we didn't want to miss out by waiting for the slow OTA update to roll out. Lollipop absolutely overhauled the aesthetics of Android and presented a big reason to want to upgrade, at least to us nerds. Much to my disappointment, that was 10 whole years ago, and since I can't think of an update that's matched that level of refinement and that level of hype, that level of change. Whether it's because of the sheer volume of updates that we get these days, which is a good thing, and so there are fewer jumps, including feature drops on the Pixel, or because Android has matured to such an incredibly well-made, comprehensive and complete operating system, Android 15 almost feels like a, a small patch bump compared to the great update that happened a decade ago. And don't get me wrong, I can appreciate some of these additions here on Android 15, like the back preview that sometimes works and sometimes doesn't, the private space locked applications, pretty handy if you hand your phone to your kid or something and you don't want them accessing your banking or your social media. I do like the new volume panel as well, it makes adjusting things just more clear and easier to do. And the adaptive vibration that was in a previous beta build has returned here on Pixel devices. It can sense what surface your phone is on and then adjust the vibration accordingly. But none of this is what I would call groundbreaking. And when you factor in that some users with different models of phone aren't gonna get all the features, it just feels like a massive hype only to be returned by a pretty small update. And now the Pixel 9 series only coming out with Android 14 feels like less of a misstep from Google. We pretty much had Android 15. It was just called Android 14. Like how many people in the real world are really gonna be using app pairs every day? Anybody? If it's you, let me know in the comments because I'm fascinated. With features being locked to certain phones, even within the ecosystems now, it further complicates things with software feeling a little fragmented. The best example is Pixel Studio. It's an app that uses AI to generate images, and that came out with the Pixel 9 series that run Tensor G4 processors, but it will only work on that, even on Android 14. The same Android 14 on the Pixel 8 series won't allow you to use Pixel Studio, at least at the moment. And the same for Google's Add Me feature. It doesn't matter which version of Android, Android 14 or Android 15, it will only work on the Pixel 9. So that's not a software only feature, that's a hardware only software feature. I have seen a report online that Google could be bringing Pixel Studio to the 8 series, which could solve this issue somewhat, but since I can't substantiate those claims, it's just a rumor right now. Having features be OS specific instead of phone specific would make Android updates and versions matter more. But from a business standpoint, it doesn't make heaps of sense to do that because then there's less of a reason for you to upgrade every year. And actually, when I think about it, Android 15 doesn't feel that different to Android 12, which is three years old at this point. Like I've recently been playing around with some slightly older phones for my personal channel, and I found that Actually, they're pretty usable and the software doesn't feel crazy different in its utility. I know quite a few people who still rock sort of a Galaxy S9, a P30 Pro and so on and they run Android 10. It's not like when we were using those phones back in the day and then you would look back at a Galaxy S4 and you'd feel the huge difference. It's just not the same. And Android 11 is just coming up to its end of life, but the four-year-old OS isn't fully obsolete yet, despite seeming ancient these days. So people using <coughs> outdated smartphones, if they don't need the latest and greatest features, is actually far more viable now than it was five or six years ago. Also, if by this point you're wondering why I have Android 15 on my Pixel 8 Pro and not Pixel 9 series devices, it's because my 9 Pro is with a colleague at the moment and I'm stuck with this. It's the best Pixel in my possession. 
the bigger changes and differences OS to OS are more likely to be found in the different software skins. So like the difference between Android 14 One UI versus Android 14 Pixel Experience versus Android 14 Oxygen OS, you get it. Where you'll find the first party manufacturer tools like DeX, Pixel Studio, Game Mode Hyperboost, and actually going between makes a bigger difference than going between different OS versions. I happen to love Samsung's One UI, for example. I think it's probably the best Android, most complete skin out there, but I know people who don't like it. And stock Android itself is so incredibly stripped back that it's really up to these different device manufacturers to implement their own versions of these features. It's not like base Android is full of features and then Samsung, OnePlus and Google just slightly reskin it with a few little features sprinkled in there. No, these specific OS skins are pretty comprehensive in their individuality and that's why it feels so different going from a Google Pixel 9 Pro to a Galaxy S24 Ultra despite the fact they both run Android 14 until today, I guess. Android feeling samey between Android 14 and 15 can sort of be tied into why smartphones feel so similar year on year. I have a video coming, by the way, about why that is, but the feeling has started to become that we've hit the peak smartphone, so to speak. And that's not exclusive to the hardware on offer, Functionally, everyone I know seems to be pretty content with the software on their smartphone. I can't think of a single time someone has gone, I really need that feature and it not be hardware. We've sort of hit a plateau now. All right then, so what updates would make me excited and what would make a huge difference? Well, if a DeX-like smartphone tool could be implemented across Android, I think it would be pretty big as I think most Android smartphones are capable from a hardware perspective and could be little Pico computers. With ARM performance being as good as it is, I do feel like that could really add value to smartphones, especially to make use of that crazy hardware. I mean, 12, 16 gigs of RAM in a phone? you could really put that to work with a little Pico computer. A Google version of AirDrop, perhaps in collaboration with Microsoft would be pretty cool. Logistically, it would be pretty tricky as well. It would be a pig to get off the ground due to there having to be partnerships between competitors, but I think that could give quite a few people a reason to switch to Android, and it's a feature that I would use all the time. I'm a sucker for UI overhauls, so if and when there's a big change to the aesthetics, I could totally see myself getting excited for a new OTA update to come out and download that. I mean, saying that, I want your opinions on this in the comment. I feel like the pixel aesthetic right now is pretty good. Like as much as I like Oxygen OS, I'm starting to find the color OS sort of bubbly look a little stale. And I think how Google does it on the pixel is just really, really good. I'm not sure I'll ever have that lollipop excitement again for Android updates. And that's okay because I'm not a kid anymore and neither is Android. It's come an awfully long way in the last half decade, and perhaps instead of lamenting the lack of innovation, we need to celebrate just how good this OS has become. Let me know what you think of Android 15 in the comments, and actually, are you in agreement that we haven't seen huge changes for the past couple of years? Or conversely, is there a particular feature that you're really excited about or have been in more recent times? And I'd love to hear if you have a feature idea that no one's really spoken about that could be implemented in a new OS that would make you excited to upgrade. And while you're down there in the comments, be sure to hit like if you enjoyed today's content and subscribe to never miss another upload. I've been Ryan Thomas, and I'll catch you later. Cheers.